Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for honoring us. Before we proceed, a giant of our people has fallen. May I ask you to all please rise for a moment of silence for the late Uncle Mendim Simang. Thank you. May his soul rest in peace. You may have a seat. Okay. Finally. Um, Iman described him as, um, as an enigma. And so to the people of power of Capricorn, to the viewers of uh, ENCA, and later on will be joined by ETV, uh, yes, uh, the epitome of uh, white monopoly capital, uh, the him. Stellenbosch Mafia, is um, here. Thank you so much for honoring us, uh, Mr. Rupert. Now it's Mr. Rupert. <laughs> where I come from, where I come from, uh, we don't call topis like you, Johan. With you, no, it's Topi. It's Mr. Is that the Shangan in you? <laughs> I, I do come from those Shangan people of Begazor Limpopo. You know Mbazima Isaac Madaka has been with me since 1979. Yeah. Right, so I know about you Shangan people, okay. What do you know about us? <laughs> well, can I tell it on air or not? No, they all shake their heads, no. <laughs> Let's just say I found out why my really good friend, Wendy Lohabi, when I tried to persuade her not to marry a trade unionist. <laughs> After a golf match, I think we all applauded, okay. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, Ceci um, Gato, thank you so much for honoring us. Uh, Mrs. Rupert, Mrs. Mkari, Ipilen, looking hot. Thanks for honoring us. And our, the person who pulled us properly last year, uh, Mam Zanelem Beki, yes. uh, who made it a point that um, we're honored by uh, President Tabon Beki. Uh, who up until this morning was going to join us, but uh, he's, he keeps taking on responsibilities. Uh, but thank you so much, Mama, to, uh, for joining yes. us tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the room, once again, and those who are listening on Power Night 8.7, streaming on Power TV on YouTube, watching on ENCA, listening on Capricorn FM, once again, thank you so much for joining us. People, you know, there's a guy called um, Skumbu Zombata, who's a host of uh, Power, uh, Capricorn Breakfast. Asked me on air the other day when we were announcing that you're joining us, and he said, Why now? Why did Johan agree to. You've never done television, you've, you hardly talk um, outside your AGMs. Why now? Why no, here? No, no, no. A lot of people have said to me that this is going to get very interesting because I'm probably the only person who talks more than you do. <laughs> That is true. Okay. And, and we've done a deal, by the way. We've done a deal that uh, today we must both watch each other because we can't mm. stop once we start. Now, why? Uh, uh, I mean, given, don't you think it's high time that we as South Africans start talking to each other instead of shouting at one another? Our country is not in great shape. The rest of the world don't really care about us. If we don't talk and listen across the board, I'm not sure that, uh, I'm sorry to say that we as South Africans can always rely upon politicians 
uh, ordinary South Africans need to engage more. We've got common goals, we've got common ideals. Everybody worries about their children. And if you can't ask me, as you and uh, your fellow Shangans and a vendor or two, turn me into white monopoly capital, a term that I was unfamiliar with, until Bill Pottinger arrived, <laughs> and the people that wear that tie of yours, that color, all around town, started attacking me out of the blue. I wasn't involved in politics, but really, I mean, it's... If we can't talk openly, then I really think we've got an issue in this country. So I said to you, you fire away, because you had a lot of allegations and things that you wanted to say. Mm. Let's do it. So, go for it. All right. <laughs> a challenge is on. I must firstly ask you, did you ever see a movie, you were too young, did you ever see a replay of the rumble in the jungle? where George Foreman beat himself to death and Ali went rope-a-dope and then in the end Ali came back. So and, be, and, be and, careful, and Ali will be, you be now. careful, be careful, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ali Rupert. <laughs> and George. <laughs> With no him. But yeah, let's get on to it. So when people and I think it's very important because up until recently, a lot of South Africans would not have known about a certain Johan Rupert. I was just doing the calc. As we sit, the market cap of companies that you control, ladies and gentlemen, about 687 billion rands. The South African business, Remgro, where's Yanni? Um, about 116. Um, but you look at uh, Iman Rishmore, whichever you say it, about 530 billion rands. Um, that's assuming that the rand is where it was when I last checked. And then, of course, Raynet, um, more or less about 41B. Um, that's a lot of Tom, that's a lot of cash. Uh, when you talk about the business from your father, the late... Hang on, uh, it's not cash, it's the market A lot of cap. Tom. Yeah. A lot of Tom. That's the problem with... We're going to get there. Gonna with get the there. men in Africa. We're going to get there. The women understand the difference between cash flow... And, yeah. <laughs> now, at business partners... Yeah. And there's some business partners people here... Unless the wife was there looking after the books, we were very concerned about Shangans and Zulus and Chwanas because you tend to buy a car immediately. Immediately BM or something. The women understand cash flow. So there's a difference between market cap given and cash. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> market cap. 687 billion, whichever way you look at it, right? So these are essentially businesses that you control, which does not necessarily translate into cash in your pocket, neither does it represent your family trust essential mm. wealth, correct? Mm. Right. So, and then we bring it at home. You think about your interest in Remgro, which is uh, the local holding company, which, as I said to power people, from the moment most of us wake up, until you go to sleep, in one or another, you would have uh, interacted with, um, with one of their businesses from the Majorin, uh, if you talk RCL Foods, whether you're talking stock or you're talking flora, and then the bread you eat to the sugar you put in the tea, 
And if you take too much of it, you get sick, and then you go to get to Medi Clinic. Um, and then you, you spoke about cars, West Bank, and then you, you talk about uh, F&B, Discovery, Momentum. I mean, you got interest in all these businesses in South Africa controlled by the Rupert Family Trust. So people will say, it's a monopoly. Well, That's let, what they'll say. Sorry, let's just get back to the basics. As President Becky pointed out last year, all the people here were, uh, belong to the government pension fund. They own twice as many shares in all of those companies as we do. And from the beginning, my father had no money. I think you've got to step back a bit. Yeah, he had no money. Ahead. He started with 10 pounds, then 100 pounds in a garage. And my ma mother was the company secretary. And they'd grown up poor. My mother walked to school with cardboard in her shoes in Krugersdorp. Depression children. She, if had she lived, this would have been her centenary year. And she saved until she was in her 80s. And Federal Volksbelegens, which was a company that really was a Sunnam company, controlled my father's company. And then after he'd lost money two or three years, they said now he's selling you out and he asked him for six months to go and place shares. And he went around, he slept over 180 days that year on a train and sold the shares. And he said, I'll never work for anyone else again if that's the way they treat me. And then he formed the pyramid companies. And interestingly, because the Afrikaners preferred imported products and the English, he had to go abroad to buy Rothmans of, and Carreras to make them here. Yeah. And then through innovation, you, curiously he wanted to become, ironically, a medical doctor. He did his MSc and then he ran out of money. And that's before they knew about the cancer and the risks involved in smoking. So it was his one eternal regret. But they went abroad and built factories and they arrived with the trademarks and then had partnerships with local people from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Singapore, Malaysia, Zambia partnerships, uh, Zimbabwe with locals, uh, Ghana, you name it. And they were young entrepreneurs. Uh, People went abroad and built these companies. And the ironical thing is they did far better outside of South Africa than in South Africa. Then, then there's a view that that level of free, free movement, even the ability to go overseas and come back, there would have been a certain heads up by virtue of them just being white. <sighs> What could they do? They were white. <laughs> I mean, you know, so, so they didn't hate blacks. They had partnerships with blacks throughout Africa. My Black father, people, Jan. Sorry. I'm now with the snowflake generation. Sorry. <laughs> Black people. Black people, not blacks. You know, I'm sorry. I say that Selwyn is a white. He's a white. You know, we, I've learned. <laughs> my children are lecturing me all the time. So... Anton, you and I are together on this. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Rupert's son, Anton, is in the room. At some stage, we'll talk about succession and intergenerational no, but, wealth. And, I'm and I'd sorry. Love to you yeah, told we'll come, me you'd we'll correct back. me. We'll come back. But <sighs> they had a choice. Either emigrate or have what... Van Weyklo described as Loyola for Set, which is loyal resistance. And they chose loyal resistance. What does that mean, loyal resistance? Loyal, 
you, you like South Africa, but you're against apartheid. You're not loyal to the NP, you're loyal to South Africa. <laughs> you know, that's another misnomer. Uh, you saw that I attacked apartheid at university, right? You saw the Cape Times article, I sent mm -hmm. it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got threatened by General Magnus Malam, that's common cause, people know that, with the squads. They shut our import permits for 10 months, the whole of REM grows. Uh, so where does the story come from? We never did business with the government. There, there in was fact, a there was in a fact if my father had immigrated, mm. the shareholders would have done a lot better. Have a look at Remgro's market cap versus Richmond's market cap. And we were boycotted overseas because of South Africa. So the choice is leave or stay. And then, and this is what really you talk about all the companies we've invested in. We could have taken the money out of the company, bought boats, whatever. But we did a series of partnerships. So the late Eric Malobi came to me, Kahiso. One by one, people came and we did partnerships with them. We didn't interfere in the management. And as for First Rand and First uh, and Rand Merchant Bank, it was not started by Remgro or by my father. I started it. We paid 177,000 rand for a 277,000 rand for a banking license, uh, and we competed against Volkswagen. Well, we were tiny. As for Rembrandt, it was tiny in comparison to Philip Morris and to BAT. We're always the tiniest. So, if you look at the facts. And it's a public company, as Anton said. It was on the stock exchange. And the pension funds, the government employees' pension fund, they have transparency. So, I, you know, you get opinions and you get facts. And I'd like to see how this narrative started developing. So somebody says to you, white monopoly capital. What does that do to you? Or Stellenbosch Mafia? Well, I ask you, what does it mean? Yes, I'm white. What does it do to you? I'm a white person, according to your, yes. to your <laughs> that's, that's terminology. You know, this stuff is also so passe. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, our children's generation will get over this. Granted, then the economic disparities must be wiped out. I agree. Yeah, and we've got that. We'll get in time. But no, but but let's go. A white, yes. Monopoly, show me a monopoly we've ever had. Just one, please. If somebody could show me one monopoly. I've tried my best, but I've failed. <laughs> Look at the monopolies in the country. Monopolies are called SAA, in roots, ESCOM. Have a look at monopolies. And then they call me a monopolist? So, so you're saying the state is the monopoly, not... not I'm so, so, saying, so you're saying that please monopoly define private monopoly. Hands. Define monopoly. In terms of capital, yes, I believe in the free market system. Until somebody can show me a socialist or a communist system that survived, if everybody had to be as good as uh, Madiba, or Mother Teresa. Yes, then socialism could have worked. But people are not that giving. People are not that nice. People act in their self-interest. And therefore, I've not seen it work. So yes, I'm white, and yes, I believe in the free enterprise system. As for the monopolist, I don't know where they get that. And the Stellenbosch Mafia? You know, I never got that invite. I don't live in Stellenbosch. <laughs> and if you had to know Stellenbosch, you had to know how 
the animosity that was in Stellenbosch. Was this? Well, I guess was because a lot of the people aren't around anymore. So uh, wait, did he just hoy a shade on um, what are they called? No, I didn't throw Steinhoff. away it. They, not at all. What, what, what do you think about Steinhoff for a second? We'll, we'll proceed. Steinhoff, no, no, I'm about... not interested in discussing other people's problems. But what? what... <laughs> okay. No, it's, it's, all I'm saying is people who do know Stellenbosch know that, I mean, people acted in their own self-interest there as well. And remember, there... I was born in Stellenbosch, but after being in New York and here in Johannesburg, I chose to go and live in Somerset West. Why was that? Mm, there's a reason. Please, sir. Uh, I'm still chancellor of the university, so I'd better keep quiet. Okay. <laughs> so is, that's the University of Stellenbosch. We talk about yes. the concept. Is, so, 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 so a picture goes like you, almost under your leadership, dark rooms, boys get together, mainly boys, and plot on how to keep the duckies out of action and how to control this country under either your stewardship or leadership somehow. That, that's essentially the concept of the stolen Bush mafia. Okay, now they have political power. We'll keep the economy amongst ourselves. And boys, nobody should know. That's the picture. You serious? Are you really serious? That's a picture. Do you believe in and, Father Christmas? And, you, and, you, and, and Father, you are the ring leader. And you supposedly. still believe in Father Christmas as well. <laughs> and that Marilyn Monroe is living in my backyard. <laughs> and that Elvis comes for Christmas. Are, we, are you serious, Given? I, so, so let's put it differently. Is there some silent conniving exercise by leaders or successful particularly africana business people where they, they used sit to together be, and plot they used to be the brooder board and my father was a member until 48 i think i don't know he never really discussed it and then he felt things were going off the rails and he felt uncomfortable being a part of a secret organization. I've never been a member of a secret organization and I get concerned about the necessity of secrecy. So there's no organization. Are you kidding me? I mean, and on that I can talk for the others as well who are mm -hmm. mentioned there. And why do we need... I mean, Surely what I've tried to do in my life belies the fact that we want to keep the darkies down. Surely if you look at how I've lived my life that it's not correct. My black American friends in New York and in, in, in America will find this incredibly funny. And your black African friends? How would you find it? Well, clearly you've told me that's what you think. <laughs> well, go and try and tell that to Michael Jordan or to you, you're a Formula One fan. Go and tell that to our current reigning world. You heard the other day he was in the car with me and Naomi Campbell called. And I had to tell you, he was going, is that Naomi, is that? I just want to tell you, okay. <laughs> wait, wait. No, 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 Johan. True. No, I'm, you do not disclose boys' secrets no, they, in public. You know, I don't want to be funny, but they actually, we just have normal lives when we're together. And it's not this distrust. This is the reason why I think it's good to have a conversation. So you um, did not want to work for Rembrandt, um, post Stellenbosch University, where you didn't quite complete. You no, did, I dropped you, you out. Did, you dropped out, but you did much. 
much better than Ostezen. What's his name? Uh, the chief whip of the DA. Um, Who? And uh, uh, Ostezen. You might not know him. You're not part of the mafia. Um, so you go to the US, you work there, you come back, you start, as you said, a red mansion bank, and a call comes somehow. Take, take me through there. Why did you not want to join the family well, business? And what my turned, father, what turned you? What my turned your father view? was not, you know, people who are so softly spoken, etc. People thought, oh, you know, very nice. And, uh, well, he was tough. Huh? And I didn't want to go and work there. And uh, a late friend of mine, Dave McKay, told me that there was an. Rand Bank had gone under, and that there was a merchant banking license for sale. So I came back and we bid for it. How did you find it? it? Bid for it at an auction. Because it was a liquidation, it was the asset, one of the assets of the defunct Rand Bank. And we were disruptors, serious disruptors, because the banks had a cartel. Uh, all the banks, the big banks, remember we were tiny, mm. and they charged the minimum rate on bankers' acceptances. So we developed a thing called a promissory note that was really a banker's acceptance in disguise. And we went to all the best and the biggest companies, Anglo, etc. And we told them, don't pay this 1.8 or 1.5, we'll do it for you at 1.3. Ah. And uh, there were no reserve requirements on bankers' acceptances. So with a capital of about 1.8 million, we wrote, wrote like 200 million rounds with the business. And of course, the other banks went nuts, went to the registrar of banks, and they came to have a look. They couldn't fault it because, in fact, our credit was better because we took Anglo-American paper and took it to De Beers, and vice versa, all around. And the people were loyal, so, and then of course they banned bankers' acceptances. Uh, sorry, uh, promissory notes, they told us we had to get reserve requirements against them. And then in 82, uh, I went on honeymoon and came back and found out that the people had lent somebody that I'd asked them not to lend to, uh, twice the capital of the bank. Hmm. And Paul Harris, who's here somewhere. Yeah, was Paul, yeah. Same Paul same. Mm. came to me, there he is, and he came to me, and he said he knows the certain individuals coming into the bank. Hmm. And I said, yes, and I'm concerned about it. And he said, maybe you've got to go and speak to GT. Hmm. And as we Afrikaners do, uh, instead of using the loo, you go and have, relieve yourself next to a tennis court. So GT and I went out and I asked him about this individual. And he said, Johan, let me put it to you like this. He invites you to a game of tennis. Hmm. Then you check the fencing, you check the height of the net, you check the size of the court bounce the balls, and then he hands you a racket without strings. <laughs> so I said, hmm, we have an issue. <laughs> so I kept on asking for security. We got more and more security. And then Donnie Gordon asked me to go to the States with him to go and see the Etna. It was 82. And uh, this gentleman still owed us two million. <laughs> and I got back, and uh, he hadn't paid. So, you ask Isaac Mandaka, mm. who's was the front page of the Daily Mail. And, of course, and you'll find this, you black people will find that black people won't necessarily support black people. Mm. These Afrikaners dumped me, including my dad's own bank. Mm. And they wanted their money back. 
And guess who helped me with the Jewish people? Hmm. Donnie Gordon, Saul Kirsner, Michael Rapp. And then went for Christmas. My dad told me, you know, he, he wasn't too pleased. So I came back on Christmas Day and one of my heroes, the late Derek Keys, had just returned. He lost it. He had a tragedy. He lost a daughter. They and his wife lost a daughter. Uh, I think eight or ten years old. And then he had just come back and started, and he was there to the discount house. And he took pity on me because Gaynor was six months pregnant. And he said, if you have a run on the bank, tell them to call me. Hmm. So, of course, two days later, we had a run on the bank. Derek covered it. That taught me a big lesson. Never, ever, ever be in a position where other people can determine your course your and, your cost. and your future. And maybe I became which, too which, conservative. Yeah, which, which is quite interesting because as somebody would have wanted to determine your overall course, having done a deal with herself that um, you are we're not going to work for the family business, what tended? Why did you Oh, join? by the way, yeah. interestingly, the one asset we got was Magnum National Life. It was? Magnum National Life. Okay. That was one of the assets we got out of this debacle. Right. Which today is Discovery. Ah. That's how we got the license for Discovery. Ah. But then in 84, uh, Gano and I were in London, and my father came back and it was this color, ashen white. And he was the age that I am now, funny enough. Mm. In those days I thought he was very old. <laughs> but I took pity I, I, on I him. Once, uh, I, was, I, was talk I was once talking to someone on the phone and I said something like, uh, the old man, something, I said, who are you calling the old man? So I said, well, but that's what, when I talked to one or two friends, the, I've got two old men that I talked to a lot of late, it's you and I mentioned the other old man. JR didn't like that. No, no the other old, old man, old. other old man, you'd better behave yourself or else on TV to whom you're referring to. Yeah, no, 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 not ah, yet. Not okay. Yet. So, so you, you shouldn't have told so the, me. Oh, the real old He's man. He's very powerful. Doctor, doctor, the okay, other, let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> doctor, 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 Andrew No, no, Robert. so my father came yeah. back and he wore a visitor's badge. Mm. I said, what's this about? He said, they made me wear a visitor's badge in my own office. Mm. And then I said, it's not gonna, this is going to stop. And uh, he'd been asking me to join. So I said to Gaynor, you know, it's, as much as I like the bank and like Johannesburg, I've got to go sort this out because mm. he, he, we're having real problems abroad. This was uh, the Romans... 84 Rothmans, yeah. Rothmans uh, International... Yeah, Rothmans. Rothmans. Uh, something. Sorry? A certain say something. The chairman of the board. Yes, right? it was. And uh, didn't they repeat that with Katya as well? No, he... he, he, he and, and, and somehow it seems to have been related to apartheid because the heat was on, right? Yeah. On um, South African companies. Yes. And your partners in the business felt that the Ruperts were becoming a liability. Not our partners. No? Not our partners. Yeah. This Australian gentleman was seeking to dislodge my dad. So I had to go there as a 34-year-old. And remember, it was the 17th largest company in the UK. Mm. And he irritated the heck out of me because he kept on calling me my boy. Mm. My boy. My, he was driving me nuts. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of old uh, black men that sounds very familiar. Boy, boy, boy. The gunner. Well, this is Australian calling a Bursian. That so <laughs> didn't go down too well. But so I went to the board and I said, uh, we're going to have an extraordinary general meeting. And he's got to go. Hmm. And uh, I'll never forget them saying to me, but you can't. Why? He said, no, he's South African. I said, if you change the company law. Can't we vote? So then, but that really set off a chain of events. Uh, so I then went, and that's where it was due to Paul Harris that I called Paul GT and Lowry, and I said, look, I've got to go to Stellenbosch, and I don't want to 
have the, my colleagues at RMB work for people I don't trust and like. Hmm. So that's when we did the deal with them. Ah. And then I went to Stellenbosch. And then uh, I said to my dad, the only way in which we can sort it out is to start Richmond. Hmm. And, and, and where is it that uh, at some stage you were advocating for essential privatization of the group? And your father had a different view, is that true? Well, my father wanted me to join in when I got back from America. Mm. And uh, I said, well, fine, let's privatize the company. Right. I don't know where you got this from, by the way. It's a Shangan thing. You're known for many things, but not for that. But in any case, let's keep <laughs> that. <laughs> but no, but it's true, he wanted, he, I said, I want to privatize it. And he listened to me and I said, Dad, it's cheap. Then we don't have any hassles. Let's just borrow the money and privatize it. And he asked me a very good question. So these people have been supportive of me when I had no money all my life. So at what price is it still a good deal for us and not a bad deal for them? Hmm. And I've never been asked anything like that on Wall Street. So but of course, that's the moral question. If it's a good deal for us to buy out the public, then it's a fact, it's a bad deal for the shareholders that trusted him all of his life. So I said, I understand. So, so, so that was sure the I end understand. of the privatization. Let me make sure I understand. Obviously, as um, the operators, as executive managers, as the people who had insights into the business, you know where the value of the business lies. Your shoulders, <laughs> as uh, the sign of guys, some, most of them we have come no, to no, know, stop. can only know up to a certain point. Management has got insights. Was your father saying that while it may be opportune and optimal for you through structuring or raising money mm. to take this business private, the people who are likely to lose out are the shoulders, including yeah. the farmers no, from was, back in the was, Cape, who have supported the business. He was obviously correct. And I, mean, I had never thought of it like that, coming from New York, leverage buyouts, etc. And he was correct, and I agreed with him. But you've got to remember, he started in 48, at 70 years ago. And they only broke through in 1978, 30 years for the company to turn cash flow proper, uh, positive. positive in a proper way. Mm. There were 200 members of the Johannesburg Afrikaans Sarka Kamer in 48. Two survived in 78, and it was Dr. Albert Vessels and my dad. Toyota? Exactly. Uh, Interestingly, uh, 198 yeah. Yeah. went bankrupt, and it took 30 years, or merged, or carried on, all of the, so, you know, it wasn't easy. It took a long time. Luckily, uh, the overseas businesses were doing well. And uh, I mean, it's reflected in all the values. Yeah. Remember they were in the same business in South Africa and overseas. Mm -hmm. They never took money out. They registered trademarks. In fact, if you speak to the Treasury and the Reserve Bank, for very, very many years, our so-called family companies mm -hmm. brought back more dividends than the rest of the Joburg Stock Exchange put together. Sure. I mean, it's, it's, these are now facts. And, the and I think apply about, f f I mean, Yanni and them gave me the numbers. So what do you get? You stay loyal to the country, you create jobs, you pay tax, you know I give my salary away. Uh, I thought the job is, if you're a good South African, that's what you do. In the rest of the world, people like people like that. So they say, please come to our country to create jobs. Please come to our country to pay proper salaries. So, Please come to our country to pay tax. And then 
to give to nations. But you do, do, do say... All, do all um, of your Reynards and particularly outside Richmond's interest, if there's a dividend coming out of uh, Richmond, does it come straight to South Africa? Nothing and, stays, yes, and BIT. Nothing stays in, in Geneva. And uh, BIT. Ambassador Helen? And, and BIT. And BIT. Yes. Yeah, all of the, it comes back to South Africa. Do you know the difference? Yeah. We're honored to have the Swiss ambassador here. In Switzerland, I got a letter of thank you from the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> it was bloody painful. I hate to say it was bloody painful. But yeah, they asked me for eight years. So unlike what your friend with the red beret thinks. You're talking about my homeboys from the Your homeboys. Yeah who said five years ago that I am influential on the SARS. No, no. We'll go to the that. The opposite. The opposite. Yeah. We'll, we'll go there. We've got five minutes before we're going to take a break. And there's a lot we need to cover. And isn't he an amazing storyteller? So you, we, I mean, an hour's almost gone, and there's the, so much to cover. Sorry, the but, truth is he wants a smoke break. He's... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that shortly. So just a quick reminder, this is the 2018 version of the Chairman's Conversation. My name is Given Kari of Power 98.7. And um, welcome the Capricorn team, ENCA, and um, uh, ETV, and everyone streaming. Can we just spend the next few seconds briefly? Your father, a child of the Depression, the Afghana people have just come out of the Anglo-Boer War. You've just seen the Great Depression. How much of an Africana activist, proud Africana, an Africana who wanted to prove a case that Africanas can do themselves, particularly against the recent oppressor, the English, how much of that cultural identity sentiment in your view, in two minutes here, has driven, the has driven the birth and growth of that, Rembrandt. That was the reason. It was. Absolutely. You've got to remember, and I was saying to you earlier on, I just hope it doesn't take this long this time, Yeah. that my grandmother didn't want me to date English-speaking girls at all. We'll get to the irony later. But she had lost her uncles and aunts in concentration camps here in uh, the old Transvaal. And in a sense, the Afrikaner was downtrodden. The, uh, the Aram Blanca question, the poor white question. And now you don't agree with me but around Pretoria and Krugerstorp, it's reappearing. So obviously, there's a lot of empathy. But it was a, they were driven. They were driven, they, but they studied. They studied like crazy and saved like crazy. They didn't go and buy BMWs and hang around at Taboo and the Sands all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay, I know. No, no. No, no. I mean, I hear this narrative that Madiba was a sellout. I mean, it's totally disrespectful. I don't see your age group, call me Otopi, I don't see you going to jail for two, nearly three decades. No, you, you'll miss the sands and you'll miss, you know. So in a sense, yeah. Be respectful to your elders. I really, your generation, I haven't seen leadership coming out. Remember, uh, I met I, Steve Biko I, when he was we, in his 20s. Yeah. And he wouldn't have carried on in taboo. So the first half, the no, first no. half, no, no. The first no, half no. goes to Ali. No, no. No, no. The first half goes to Ali. We don't have time. So I've let him have fun in the first hour, deliberately. Second round, Baba. Okay, second so round. You, so you are Se now, I'm coming at you're you. Muhammad Ali. Second, uh, second round, okay. we'll watch. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a brief break. 
We spend a lot of time on a reflective focus, but the truth is we are where we are today, and I want us to spend more time about what do we do with what we know. It's 9 o'clock. Let's take a brief break. Thank you very much. Okay.